Today, we're gonna show you exactly how to make fermented vegetables for yourself and your dog. So stay tuned. Welcome to our channel everyone. Today we're going to show you a super easy recipe making fermented vegetables for your dogs but in reality you can make it for your family, kids and yourself as well. We're going to show you the easiest recipe that's out there and I would say let's not talk further let's just get to it. Let's get straight to let's it. Let's get to it. Ugh. Okay so to make fermented vegetables I have my cutting board. <laughs> We have a juicer here and over here we are using some white cabbage, some red cabbage, some carrots and the celery is for the juice that we're going to be making. The first step in making fermented veggies is actually making the starting culture first and we're going to go after a recipe that I found on the Dr. Mercola's website. <laughs> We're actually using a slow juicer. We found that slow juicers keep more of the nutrients in the juice instead of in the pulp. For the starting culture, we have some celery juice and carrot juice. I've used red beet juice last time I did it. I'm pretty sure you can use any juice. We have half a liter, so 500 milliliters, and we're gonna use a quarter of a teaspoon of probiotics. Yeah, so I'm gonna just drop that in there. If you use a liter of juice, you're gonna use half a teaspoon and so on. Good. All right, so now we're gonna just cut up the vegetables, wash them and shred them. And I'm gonna do it in food processor. Last time I cut them. It's up to you if you want it a little thinner or smaller the pieces or you want it a little thicker. Some dogs don't eat big pieces of vegetables, so you might want to cut it in a food processor. All right, I'm also actually going to save a couple of these leaves, kale leaves, because uh, I need one, one per jar. So you save one per jar. Step three. Step three is basically just pouring our starter culture over our cabbage and we will mix it then. Just trying to make sure that the starter culture is everywhere. And mix it. So the probiotic in the starter culture will make sure that the good bacteria multiply and kind of inoculate this thing. Okay, I think I'm done. So the next step would be to just fill our mason jar with the cabbage and the, the starter culture. So we're supposed to also, maybe you know these fermentation kits, they have this block that you like press everything down with. I don't have that so I'm just gonna use my hand. All that juice coming up, that's a good thing. So, because we want all the veggies to be in that juice. All right, now I can put more. Again. That looks good. Mm. All right, so now we've put in the veggies and the starting culture. We've mashed it all down, we've put more veggies in and it's full now. I'm gonna put this cabbage leaf on top. So I just laid it on the top and now we're gonna close it. So there's two options. I have the regular top from the mason jar that came with the mason jar. If you use this, make sure that you do not screw this on tight. Don't screw it on tight because the fermentation process is actually making gases and your glass may explode or what happened to me the first time I did it, it just flowed over basically. So don't close it too tight, just yeah, like kind of loose. And then also what you might wanna do is just open it every couple of days because if there's gas in there, it wants to go somewhere. So you just open it and then close it slightly back. 
So the second option is that we got these things that are uh, supposed to be especially for fermentation. So they have like this air hole here that releases the air automatically. Or I have this little pump that I can use that is just gonna suck the air out. And then there's no pressure left. And we're putting it in a place that is somewhat controlled temperature. I'm gonna put it here with my kombucha. That's my fermentation area. And then we have to wait seven days. After seven days, this bad boy is ready and we are ready to eat it. Milka and I. I'm not sure if Larry's gonna eat it. Let's see. <laughs> He's nodding his head. <laughs> So our fermented veggies are finally ready to eat. I just gotta admit to you one thing. On day two of the fermentation process, I had to actually take out some of the brine and some of the vegetables. You might see it. Uh, I had it filled up all the way to the top and I would actually recommend to you that you don't do it because it just kept on overflowing and I had a mess in the kitchen because it's quite normal that the vegetables that they kind of rise up and it's important especially in the first couple of days to make sure that the vegetables are always underneath the brine so everything is in the liquid and yeah so I just took the cabbage leaf, leaf out took vegetables and brine out and I put the cabbage leaf back in because cabbage leaf is actually what kind of holds it down a little bit it's like kind of like the weight function but anyway they are ready and as you might see the top layer got a little bit brown which is normal i'm just taking out the cabbage leaf and like kind of the first brown layer the reason this first layer actually turned brown is because it oxidized. So air got to the first layer of fermented vegetables and it turned the, the cabbage brown. It's not bad at all, we're just gonna remove it because we wanna eat the, the sauerkraut that's not oxidized yet. All right, awesome. Now, let's do the taste test. And Mika's waiting already. Let's try fermented vegetables. The last bet you wouldn't eat it, so let's see. We good? It's a bit sour. No. Mm -hmm. I guess a sauerkraut, right? Should be sour. Yeah, sure. Let us know in the comment section if you actually eat the fermented vegetables that you make for your dogs or if it's just your dogs that get the goodies. And let us know if you like it. <laughs> yeah, let us know if you like it, exactly. That's a good question. So now, Mika, do you want to try? Uh-uh. You want to try? Mika, los? Los? All right, so once you're done tasting your fermented vegetables, they are ready to go in the fridge. Like I said, they've been fermenting for seven days. Now we're gonna put them in a the fridge where the fermentation will still go on, but only a little, little, little bit. If I would leave it out now, the fermentation would continue, but I'll put it in the fridge. I will be putting this onto Milka's meals and let's talk about how long it's actually going to last for. How long fermented vegetables last really depends on the different processes and practices that you use. I personally like to make fermented vegetables and use it within three months and then just make a new one because usually like we use it up in three months. But it's up to you. Fermented vegetables can be good for even nine months, even longer. For anybody that has concerns about food safety, like it's really hard for a batch of fermented vegetables to actually go bad to a point where you have to throw it away. And there's actually a really nice website that we found that has kind of like the troubleshooting for fermented vegetables and we're going to link that down below as well because that helped us a lot. As with every new food, introduce fermented vegetables slowly so that they get used to the new smell, taste and digestion as well. If your dog is a picky eater, go extra extra slow because fermented veggies are kind of sour and they are not for everybody but if you introduce them slowly then there's a be better chance that your dog will actually eat them if you want to know more about fermented vegetables then please be sure to check out this video in which we speak 
more in depth about the benefits of feeding fermented vegetables to your dogs. Now we want to hear from you. Have you made your own fermented vegetables for your dog and yourself? Do you have any tips and tricks that you can share with us or our community? Because sharing is caring and we'd like to really know how to make our fermented vegetables better and better and better as we continue to make them. All right, everybody, we hope that you got all the knowledge and all the tips and tricks to make your own fermented vegetables now. If you haven't already, then please subscribe to this channel for the love of dogs. See you next time.